Today, we are going to discuss an extinct breed, the Old English Black and Tan Terrier, also known as the Black and Tan Terrier, Old English Terrier, Old English Working Terrier, English Working Terrier, etc. It's also sometimes called Rough Coated Black and Tan. But that gives you a little bit of an imp impression of the names it had. And uh, this is a fell type of terrier. So it was a terrier that they used in the northern region of England, and especially in the Lakeland uh, district. So it gives you some insight already in the type of terrier. It's completely separate to the terriers that they use in other places for hunting foxes. For example, the southern parts of England, they use their white foxing terriers, such as the terriers that we now know as uh, Fox Terrier, Jack Russell Terrier, Petadil, no, uh, Parson Russell Terrier. The Petadil Terrier, as you see here, is a modern incarnation of the Black and Tan Terrier of Fox, but it's further evolved and I will come back to that later. So this uh, Black and Tan Terrier type is a type that was uh, used for hunting. It was a terrier that in Everett had a broken coat. Sometimes also long haired, but also smooth varieties were found. They varied quite a bit in size and type, but they were all very hard working types of terriers. And this is the oldest, or one of the oldest types of terriers that they had in, uh, in the UK. So this uh, type of dog was a working type of terrier. All terriers were working types of terrier, but this is an extreme working type of terrier. So what do I mean? Some terriers work their prey by uh, especially this uh, barking, then attacking and then going back again, a little bit of taunting, what you often see in the white uh, fortune terriers. But this is a terrier that goes in for the hole. So it's like a uh, real wrestling type of terrier. It's more of a miniature catch dog. And this uh, has given rise to the fell terriers. Some of the current show stuff that we know of are the Lakeland terrier, same region of course, but also the border terrier and some of the Welsh terrier. Welsh terrier is almost a Lakeland terrier, but has a lot more fox terrier influences wrapped into it. They said that it would improve the coat, but it's not always an improvement. So, heeft u? Oké, okay. hoi hoi! So this is uh, the types that they have evolved in show type ring, but also they you still have the black felt area types that are the current days uh, black and tan areas. So as mentioned that they were extinct, I do not agree, because I think the black felt area is just a modern version of this black and tan area. The Platinal Terrier is a further division between this black felt terrier further evolved as well. Also, the terriers that uh, we know, the black terriers, have uh, been also crossed with smaller pit type of dogs, more Dumberland type, and also uh, other types, and the pit type of dogs often have a shorter coat, and then they were interbred again. So you also see this, for example, in the Fox Terrier. There's a wirehead variety, but also a smooth coated. Like in the Petadils, you have wirehead, rougher coat, but also a long head uh, Petadils and smooth coats. So it depends on the terrain and also on the, the needs of the breeder. But not only that, also the makeup. 
genetic makeup. Sometimes they breed in different types to, for example, add additional power, add additional gameless, or uh, give them a better coat protection for certain uh, circumstances as well. So this is a, a little story about uh, the black and tan terrier, which should be very much respected. And also, in my opinion, the black and tan terrier also went into some of the one terriers that made the Staffordshire Bull Terrier to a degree, but also the American Pitbull Terrier in a later evolvement. So the pit dogs also got a little bit of uh, black and tan terrier influence as well. Next to the bulldog, which looks a lot more like the current day uh, Staffordshire Bull Terrier or American Pitbull Terrier than the bulldog that you see, see now in the show ring. But also, if there was some terrier blood infused, it would have been this, uh, this hard type of working terrier. Next to the, the white terrier, but the white terrier, which was also no, an old English uh, type, went more into the uh, fox type of terriers, and also in the English uh, bull terrier, which was named the white cavalier which had some of this bull and terrier blood, but also some of this uh, white blood added. Also, a lot of people say that the black and tan terrier of today is the Manchester terrier. I don't think it's correct. In the Manchester terrier, there is uh, blood infused also from a whipper type of dogs to make it a faster type. Also, they are quite big, the normal size. You have a miniature version, of course, but this is more of a faster, lurch type of uh, dog instead of an all in all earth type of dog so this is uh, a thing that i do not agree upon and also the manchester area hence the name is different to the region of the lakeland where this uh, black and tan terrier existed so the black and tan terrier had some black and tan markings perhaps what could also be totally black or totally tan and this you also see in the modern day fell terriers or for example the border terrier it's a lot different than the black and tan markings that you see for example the manchester terrier or rottweiler or doberman pincher so long story short this coloration that you see in the manchester terrier could occur but mostly where they were quite a lot different and they are often having four, far more red in it if, if it was combined with black and also not that uh, type of markings altogether much more like a border terrier or the current day lakeland terrier often has or even totally black like this rattled terrier or totally red like a red fell terrier red rattled terrier hope you like this video if you do please subscribe